Okay, so if there isn't no sound, I'm hoping somebody's gonna drop a message, drop a message or something. So, uh, once again, another week, another lesson that we've uh, managed to uh, come together with the intention of of uh, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his beloved Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's always a sharaf, it's always an honor to be able to be given the time for that. Remember one thing that if uh, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't want you to attend the class or be joined to be part of a class, then you wouldn't. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that whenever you see a, a, a garden of paradise, you know, start grazing in. And the Sahaba said, you know, Ya Rasulullah, what's a garden of paradise? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, you know, circles of knowledge, that they're gardens of paradise. The angels see, see uh, the gatherings are for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When they look upon the earth, they can see the gatherings that are for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, just like what we see when we look upon the heavens. So when we see the stars, that's what how it looks like when the angels look upon the earth. They see gatherings of lights. They see these lights and they descend down to these lights. And when they descend down to these lights, you know, they circumambulate all the way around the uh, one angel comes after another and they start surrounding that gathering. And then, then they start circumambulating that gathering all the way to a point when the angels gather so much that it reaches the arsh, the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I remember this is sayings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and he is Sadiq al-Mastuq, he is the most truthful from truthful people. Remember, we know now he is known as Al-Ameen. So when he says something like that, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's true. It's not stories. It's not, oh, it sounds good. You know, it sounds nice. No, this is haq. And you know, this is haq. This is the truth. Like what we said was, when the angel was asked by under angels, what did your Lord say? What did they, what did Jibreel alayhi sallam, so Jibreel alayhi sallam said, you know, قال الحق, he said the truth. And whatever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that he doesn't speak from his own wah, you know, um, his hawa. He doesn't speak from his own desire. You know, some, you know, some people might think that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he speaks, he, you know, like how we speak, you know, blah de blah, that just comes out of our mouths, it just comes out. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not like that. He speaks with intent. Every single word that is uttered by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not, um, it's not, it's not insignificant. That the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always had clear intent of every single, I won't even say a word, every single letter that left the blessed mouth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam always had a clear intent you know like how we speak and we do uh mm, yeah and sometimes you know it's never recorded that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam ever did that in his life where he did mm, mm, uh you, you know where you kind of uh, stutter or stumble on what you don't know what to say the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam never it's never been recorded that he ever experienced that in his life because he is perfect sallallahu alayhi wasallam he is an archetype human being. He was a human being, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he was an archetype human being. He wasn't like, like just like a, a stone, you know, you get a jewel. The jewel, you know, it, shares, it comes from the family of stones, but it's not like other rocks. It's not like other stones. It's a special stone. And that's what it is with the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he is also, uh, you know, very unique in that sense. He is unique in his own, you know, he's created unique, like the poet said, uh, one of the poets, one of the sahabas around the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa who said that uh, <laughs> there's, no, there's no eye, you know, nobody has ever seen a face as beautiful as yours. It's as if you were created by your own desire. Like that's how the sahaba says about the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He's saying this in front of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa This is not... This is in the presence of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and 
you know, he said, you, it's been as if you, you created, you know, with your own desire. That, you know, like as if that's how you wanted to be created. Subhanallah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was perfect and he is perfect in every single manner and every single way. So when we have gatherings like this, angels descend upon these gatherings. Angels descend upon these gatherings. And when you read Allah khairan, you faqihu fi deen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whoever, if you want, uh, whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for somebody, he gives them, you faqihu fi deen. He gives them understanding of deen. Gives them understanding of religion. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided you and I to his gatherings, Believe me, he wants good for us. That's it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants good for us. And that's not the case for everybody. It's not easy. Not everybody attends class. Not everybody comes up to learn their religion. And you know what? We were in a talk yesterday, yeah? And we were in like a little podcast show. And, um, and you know, somebody said something to me that it really bothered me. It really did bother me, honestly. And, I, and I'm glad I'm, I'm channeling out now. I'm letting it out. You know, somebody, you know, somebody put a comment on, or, or, you know, as soon as I come on the, the show, he said, oh, we know that it's going to be, you know, don't go all religious on the stuff. You know, we know the world's going to end. And he goes, don't go all religious on us. And you know what? I'm sorry. But for, for the, I mean, I only understand if a non-Muslim says that. But you know, when a Muslim says that, you know that there's serious problems in our perception of life. Like you know that there's people out there who just see religion as a pie in the sky when you die. It's just something to, it's ritual. It's prayer, man. Just pray your prayer. Just pray. You know, you're a religious guy. I'm not saying I'm a religious guy, but saying somebody's a religious guy, people want to just, 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 just be religious there. Don't be religious here. You know what I mean? And that's the problem in terms of what we've molded this religion to be. That we've molded this religion to be something that, look, you can't bring religion into everything. But say that to the one who conquered half of this world because of religion. Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu ruled almost all the way to Egypt using the principles of Islam, religion, and being a fair, just ruler. Like you can say, don't bring religion into it. But mate, you know, yeah, I could understand, don't bring religion into the parts of it where it's fabricated and distorted and, you know what I mean? presented in a way where it's not supposed to be but look at look look how many deaths we're having right now look how many deaths are we having right now you know and it was publicly publicly said i mean i didn't actually hear this leader said so i'm not going to quote him i'm not going to say the name but a cer apparently certain, a certain leader from a certain country of the world said that you know if 100,000 people die we've done well we've done well and you know maybe percentage wise somebody somebody can make sense of that look at look at Hazrat Umar radiallahu an where Islam has reached all the way to Egypt from Hijaz and uh, Hazrat Umar radiallahu an he says if a dog dies next to the river Nile I'm afraid that Yom Al-Qiyamah I will be asked about that animal about that creature that I'm afraid I will be asked about that on Yom Al-Qiyamah Hazrat Umar radiallahu an he wouldn't sleep at night he wouldn't sleep at night and, and, and he will he would uh, he would carry bowl you know sacks of uh, flour and barley and uh, you know trying to take it to the poor himself physically and I and this is Amir al Mu'minin this is Khalifa remember this is not Khalifa of a city or you know this is, we're talking a, a, a world feared man Hazrat Umar radiallahu an all the way to Jerusalem he was feared. Like people knew of Hazrat Umar. He wasn't no, you know, little clan leader. He was, you know, ruling countries. Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu. This is what his state. This is what he was saying publicly. Like it was said that when men, when, uh, uh, when, uh, when the people came to visit him, uh, they said, they came to the, the courtyard of Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu. And they, they asked somebody, where's your leader? And they said, there he is. What's he doing? He's sleeping on the floor in the, in the mosque. And they said, where's his, where's his uh, aunt, you know, entourage? Where he, where's his uh, advisors? Where's his guards? Where's his, where's his people? And 
they said, no, he doesn't have any of that. And he said, and they were shocked. And they go, is he a prophet? And the Sahaba goes, no, but he acts like one. He's trying to, he's imitating one. So the point is, you know, if you look around the world, for me, as a Muslim, we should believe that our solutions of our life, our physical, spiritual, and rational, whichever problems that we have in life, we should, as Muslims, believe that the solution for it is in, in, is, is in Allah and His Rasul, in, in religion. We should feel like that. And, if the, and, and I get it. Maybe it's not put out like that. But then those people who are responsible to point, present your religion like that, they've got a job to do. You know, they've got a job to do in the sense of making Islam accessible where, in a way where it's a solution to the problems of our life. In every single solution. And it is. But we just need to be able to dissect it in a way or extrapolate from the religion where it becomes a solution for our life. For every single problem in our life. But it's not, it shouldn't be this type of ritual thing. You know what I mean? Religion is supposed to be something very practical in a person's life. Very, very practical. Like how you raise your children, how you set up your household, education. Like you want to talk about education systems. Look at the history of Islam and education. See, see, look at the history in Islam education. Look at the history of Islam in politics, you know, rule. Like you talk about any advancement in the world, Islam at one point was the forefront of it. And we're not talking too long ago. Look, you know, mathematics and all this and that. You know, I don't want to go on about it, but Islam provides solutions. Believe me, it does. And we need to be able to have access it in a way where we are uh, in our relationship with Islam should be in a way where we just find taking solutions from it all the time. And it shouldn't be, you know, where it's, oh bro, don't go religious. And anything you learn other than for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what we believe as Muslims, by the, you know, it's, if it's not learned for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's cursed. If it's not learned for the sake of Allah. And when it's learned, when, when something is learned for the sake of Allah, what does it mean? Are you going to benefit Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with whatever you know? No, no, you're not. I'm not. No one is. But who do you benefit? You benefit people. The point is when we say you learn for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in reality what you're trying to say is you're learning for, to help mankind, to help people. But with the amr, with that, the commandment is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, you know, many people lack perception of religion, of deen, Islam, all of these things, it's very ritual based. It's very, look, oh, come on, my dog, oh, relig religious, and this and that. Wallahu alam, I don't know. But personally, Islam for a person, for a Muslim, uh, it should be his first criteria in the sense of first criterion in the how a person recognizes, percep how a person perceives things in life. Look at the one of the du'as of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That, Ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah, you know, show me haq, the truth as truth. And give me the ability to follow it. And show me falsehood as falsehood. falsehood. Like show me false things as false. And give me the ability to, you know, to keep away from it. Like that's what we want to be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like we want to see things for how they, the problem of the du'as of the Prophet Ya Allah show me things for how they truly are. Wallahi. And... Uh, so I think these things, uh, maybe we all need to grow, myself as well, in our understanding and perception of religion. Like what is, what does religion mean to you in your life? Is it something, a class that you attend a weekly? Is it something, is it a Jum'ah, is it a once a week thing? Or is it every single, is it the, 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 the factor that will decide for you every single affair in your life? How you deal with every single problem in your life? Whether it's coronavirus, whether it's religion, every single thing has to be go through the channel of your religion, that's why you say, La ilaha illallah. That's why you say it. And if you don't mean that, then that's an issue. If you're just saying, La ilaha illallah, because your parents are Muslim, or whatever, whatever, then good luck. I hope it works out for you. I really do. But from what we've taken from our teachers, that's not, what, that's not the purpose of religion. It's not this type of, like I said, pie in the sky when you die. So anyway.